Vermont.com. All right, some more text that for my uh, the bug the the Big Twelve kind of looks stupid right now, don't they? For the way they treated other schools during the possible expansion a few years ago, like Cincinnati, Brigham Young, Bo- Boise State, Houston, that could hurt them a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if they look stupid, but I do know that that was something in which they scoffed at those schools the way now maybe conferences are looking at them. Yeah, it's that uh, old life lesson, right, of you never know, you know treat people right on the way up because you never know who you're going to meet on the way down, mm-hmm. right? And and that's kind of what the Big 12 is probably feeling uh, to an extent right now. So, yeah, uh, it would be interesting to see, you know, obviously where all the chips fall, but the Memphises, the Cincy's, the – the other schools that are involved in that group that's been mentioned from time to time, yeah, they're kind of, I'm sure, chuckling a little bit right now, but also at the same time going, but we'd still like to come, so please still invite us. Yeah. Like, but by, by the way, that'll be our top five today, is if that's the scenario of adding schools to the Big 12, the five uh, that I would add. We have text that we're not going to be able to read right now, but 714-251-901-360-620-605-512 is down in the Austin uh, area as well. Here we go. All Back right, the calls. Uh, to the 254 and Cody, you're on Sikkim 365 Radio. Thanks for your call and thanks for holding. Hey, how y'all guys doing today? Doing, doing great, great, Cody. All right, uh, I'm calling from Arkansas. I'm a big Hog fan. I just want to talk about Texas and OU going to the conference. There's two things. Uh, it can mean a lot of things for us Hog fans. We get the Texas game back in Little Rock and possibly another rival game with Oklahoma. Bad thing is the recruits. Man, uh, it's 27 players from Texas and 10 players from Oklahoma. And I'm guessing whenever Texas join the SEC, those numbers are going to drop. Um, and there's only 38 in-state recruits from Arkansas. And the news is that's around here in my home in my home state is uh, Arkansas is going to get ready to play Arkansas State in 2025, and they're scared they're going to lose the in-state recruits to A-state, which I believe is going to happen. Because let's just be honest, in the past 18 years, ever since um, my favorite coach has left over, you know, just I, for what reason, I don't know. You know, they, they haven't been good. And A-State has been doing really well. Really well. Here's my thoughts about what you're saying. Oklahoma doesn't have a lot of great – I have talent. They have blue-chip talent on some of the schools we've just discussed. But Arkansas does have to rely on Memphis. They have to rely on Louisiana. They have to rely on Texas and Oklahoma. I don't think it's going to hurt their recruit. I really don't. I think that all it does to me is you're now getting to play against people that maybe don't recruit you from Oklahoma and Texas. There's a lot of that goes on with TCU and Baylor here in the state of Texas. Gary Patterson, when Art Browse was at Baylor and they had their success, and even now, they get players who are very good and then they develop them who were turned down by Texas, Oklahoma, and A&M. And listen, they've turned out to be NFL-type players, too, in some of them, a part of them. So I still think Arkansas, yeah. in my opinion, is fine. I don't know the quite the landscaping as you do, but I think that yeah. it's going to just and, strengthen what their story and, is. And, Cody, I'll tell you what it's about. It's about two things for Arkansas. They've not had consistent athletic directors, and they've not had consistent coaches. And it's about the athletic and the coach. If the, if, oh. Yeah, if they get that right – then the recruits will come because they'll come and play in college towns if the coach is right. Clemson was and also ran for a whole, a real long time, a long time. They had some good coaches, but they didn't have great coaches. Now they have a great athletic director, they have a great head coach, and they're the program. So, you know, Arkansas could easily do that. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, you gave me a little hope, though. All right. <laughs> thanks, Cody. <laughs> and, and, and I hope we – yeah, thanks for the call, and thanks for listening in Arkansas. Uh, the uh, Call the Hawks, 254-339-1122. Yeah. I mean, I think Arkansas will ultimately be fine. I, I do think, to his point, there's going to be a little more jostling, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's going to sure. be some other guys that, uh, you know, all of a sudden Texas or Oklahoma feel like they maybe have a better chance at or whatever the case may be. So, yeah, it's going to – it's going to, to make things a little bit tougher, but I, I do think Arkansas comes into to battles often enough with those schools anyways that, uh, you know, it kind of is, is going to remain somewhat the same. But, I mean, anybody thinking that that SEC brand now being placed on OU in Texas isn't going to cause some, some you know, chaos as far as the recruiting goes, uh, you know, is not paying attention because that's definitely going to matter. But, again, how much higher are they going to go? Was Texas going to be top four rather than top five every year? Is Oklahoma going to be – top five rather than top 10 every year. I mean, they're already way up there. So, 
um, yeah, there's room for growth. But I, I think Arkansas, if they play their cards right, will we'll be fine in the long run. Yeah. All right. Let's take uh, one more real quick. Let's take uh, let's take Elwood in Greenville. You're on Sikkim 365 Radio. Good evening, good afternoon, gentlemen. It's nice to find you on my YouTube channel, so Thank I can uh, watch all every day. And been following you since this um, whole thing, um, uh, this uh, this expansion has come forth. But obviously, uh, in full disclosure, I'm a Big Ten guy. I'm a Maryland Terrapins fan. Okay, so just to get that out the way. The other thing is, we talk about football for obvious reasons, but. We haven't talked about the basketball end of it. Your school just won the national championship, and then before that, Texas Tech. And Texas just lost their coach to Marquette, and Ron Kruger retired. How are they going to fit in basketball-wise? I, I think, and, and thanks, thanks for the call. call, by the way. Yeah. Are you talking about Greenville, Texas? Yeah, right. Greenville, okay, yep. yeah, just east yeah. of Dallas. Yeah. Yeah. El- Elwood, I, I think this about basketball. Unfortunately for basketball, even though it, it, it the NCAA tournament makes a lot of money, none of these decisions are made because of, of men's basketball. But I do think your men's basketball team can help you. I think Baylor won this national championship at the absolute perfect right time for this to have happened because at least they have that that they can hang their hat on. Texas Tech was in the Final Four just two years ago. Uh, look, long Ron Kruger retires, but they got the the coach from Loyola Chicago. And uh, let's let's say this: Texas did not lose their Talking coach to Marquette. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Texas did not lose their coach to Marquette. Texas's coach left to go to Marquette. He was asked because, privately because quietly, they wanted to hire Chris Beard from Texas Tech. We so, like you, Shaka, but you probably yeah. need to so, walk out. Yeah, the door. The, it's yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and I wonder, you know, how much thought was in I, I guess uh, UT and OU's minds about. I, I just I'm curious how far out they were planning the SEC move, mm-hmm. and if they had Porter Moser or Chris Beard you know, in mind, like as a big move to make upon, you know, kind of the timeline of entrance into uh, to the SEC. I don't know about that. But, yeah, I think the both schools will be fine in, in basketball. Uh, the SEC has gotten a lot better in basketball. I know it's, it's, uh, it's definitely raised its game up uh, another level. So what's already a competitive league is going to be a lot more competitive because well, Chris Beard and Texas are going to be good. Porter Moser, I would imagine, is going to make Oklahoma – uh, relevant again uh, they've been kind of down for you know a few years now but I mean they've had runs I mean they had the Buddy Heald run uh, not that Trey long Young. ago they had the Trey Young uh, they had a uh, oh man I've been going way back Hollis Price that's probably too far back but yeah I mean Oklahoma's had some recent success uh, so I, I think both will fit in fine I think it'll just make that much more of a you know of a, a strong conference uh, when it comes to hoops all right uh, thank you to all of you who called the text messages lines are blowing up everywhere all over the state, all over the country, from every fan base, even North Dakota State. When we come back, Brian Estridge, uh, 